Sunglasses for Thursday and Friday, but one more day of quite unsettled weather for today. Highs of 8 degrees. Steve and Sophie. All right, thanks very much for that, Westla. All right, uh, there's a new study that just came out from the Rick Hansen Institute about uh, spinal cord research and Canadians' perceptions of spinal yeah. cord research and spinal cord injuries. And uh, Jocelyn Tomkinson is, uh, works with the researchers at the Rick Hansen Institute and has obviously some uh, first-hand knowledge of, um, of spinal cord injuries and spinal cord research. So uh, we wanted to bring her in today to talk about this study. So th we're talking a lot about the cost of spinal cord research and the, the cost of... Um, of caring for people with spinal cord injuries. Mm -hmm. what, what did this uh, study find? Well, they uh, did a poll of a sample of Canadians, and what they found was that um, uh, the really large costs of incurring a spinal cord injury and the care that um, someone with a spinal cord injury needs, um, it, you know, Canadians weren't generally aware of that. and. You know, in some ways that's not surprising because we only just learned it as researchers not too long ago. And so this poll is an opportunity to get a sense of now, 25 years after Rick's tour, um, where Canadians are at in understanding it. But it was staggering because uh, most Canadians thought it would be no greater than $100 million a year. The actual number is $3 billion. It is. It's, I mean, that's staggering. It's one of the most... Um, intense and expensive traumatic injuries that anyone can incur. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's paraplegia and then there's tetraplegia, which is involvement of all four limbs. And um, the care required to get someone with a spinal cord injury back and integrated in their lives again is quite expensive. But if we can, um, the long-term expense is much lower. So we look at the cost to the system, but the cost of research is like an investment um, that sure. lowers costs later. Definitely. Right, so where where do you hope this research or that this study then will take you? Well, I think this study was this poll was a great opportunity for researchers such as those at Rick Hansen Institute and ICORD, which is a UBC spinal cord injury research center, um, to to look at where people are at and to to get the message out saying that research isn't just great for science and it, it's an investment in people with these kinds of injuries and it's an investment in lower costs to the system later. Right. Another interesting part about this was the fact that respondents believe that, that any spinal cord injury is permanent no matter what. And we've seen obviously with Mike Harcourt that that's definitely not the case. Mm -hmm. um, Talk about where research is going. Uh, is are you close to a breakthrough where you can regenerate tissue and, and try to repair spinal cord injuries? We're making a lot of progress, specifically in areas of um, cell and, and tissue rehabilitation and using engineering new tissues that can um, help the spinal cord repair itself. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Mike Harcourt's case is a, a great example of how far we've come in 25 years. Sure. And um, But there's a long way to go. We, we really haven't been able to... Um, reverse paralysis that successfully yet and um, and so a lot of work's being done in areas of finding a cure mm -hmm. and also in areas of improving quality of life for people with SCI. So just on a personal level, uh, so 25 years ago, uh, you were seven years old. I was seven sorry, years old. I'm giving away your age a that's little okay. bit. <laughs> you were seven yeah. years old. And you, that's when you first saw Rick Hansen. You welcomed him back from his Yeah, I was tour. one of those little kids along this, the road in Vancouver when he came back into town. And, um, you know, of course, at seven, he was my hero. I had his poster on my wall. And, and later on, I played basketball at the same uh, uh, sort of level that he did. And... Um, I grew up in the benefit of, of his work and of his advocacy and I think that just goes to show um, how having a really good public understanding of spinal cord injury needs and research mm -hmm. um, and that the poll really said that, that people support spinal cord injury research can really um, improve lives like mine. And one last question, that is, uh, we've seen with like, a, like broken limbs and broken legs and things like that, how pins and needles and, and poles and all that kind of stuff can work. Is there, is there anything like that underway for spinal cords as far as, as you know, I'm sort of, I don't want to say bionic, but you know what I'm saying, yeah. with that kind, of, that kind of research being done? Absolutely. I think you're referring to something we call rehabilitation engineering, and yeah. that's a big area in improving quality of life for people with SCI. They're robotic exoskeletons and super high-tech wheelchairs that are bringing people with SCI, as well as many other types of paralysis and aging even, into the world, into full integration, which is where we'd like to see it as well. All right, thanks so much for coming in, Jocelyn. If you'd like more information about this, you can go to the Rick Hansen Institute website. It's rickhanseninstitute.org.
Thank you very much. Thanks. All right, let's go to Caitlin and get some traffic details. Well, this morning, uh, dealing with difficult driving conditions through the southern interior. So if you're heading uh, to and from the southern interior today, be prepared.